Hi, I'm Reb Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. I'm going through the lessons this year, asking Jesus to clarify for me, and then I'm writing from that clarity. I've done this for several years now. So, let's just get started. We're looking at Lesson 292 today. And don't forget to um, uh, read our um, topic uh, for these 10 lessons. Jesus asks us to read it every day. So, Lesson 292, A Happy Outcome to All Things is Sure. God's promises make no exceptions, and he guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found for everything. Yet it is up to us when this is reached, how long we let an alien will appear to be opposing his. And while we think this will is real, we will not find the end he has appointed as the outcome of all problems we perceive, all trials we see and every situation that we meet. Yet, is the ending certain? For God's will is done in have earth and heaven. We will seek and we will find according to his will, which guarantees that our will is done. We thank you, Father, for your guarantee of only happy outcomes in the end. Help us not interfere and so delay the happy endings. You have promised us for every problem that we can perceive, for every trial we think we still must meet. So I'm gonna write about, I'm gonna tell you about the good news and the other good news. <laughs> the good news is that we will reach a joyful outcome. We will reach God because it is his will that we do so. The other good news is that when this happens, it's up to us. We are the ones who are resisting his will, and so we're the ones who must change our minds about this. It is all that we have to do, and we could do this in any moment. But we will probably take a lot of moments in which we decide situation by situation to accept the atonement or not, and that's okay. In the end, though, we will let go of the separate will and accept God's will as our own. We might as well do it quick, as quickly as possible because God's will is done on earth and in heaven. There is no choice in this. We can only dream we can decide against God's will, and this will just delay the inevitable and cause more suffering. I've learned to question all decisions I make as to whether they are in alignment with the ego or with God. I can always change my mind if I fail to choose God. It's a relief to know that in the end, we will find a joyful outcome to everything. For a while, this was a promise I clung to, and it was enough. Now, though, I want the promised joy sooner rather than eventually. I know what I have to do, and so I do it. Every day, I watch my thoughts and gladly release those that are not true. Today, I talked to my friend who's having trouble coping with insomnia. It's always a problem for him, but sometimes more than others. As he tells me how he feels, I feel so sad for him, and my heart aches. After we hang up, I feel a ball of anxiety in my stomach. I know this is an ego reaction to the situation. I put my hand on my stomach, and I say with conviction that I will forgive this, and it will disappear. I forgive the belief that my friend is in a hopeless situation. This fear I feel for him is not love, so I forgive that belief. I forgive the belief that joining him in his story is helpful. I forgive the idea that the world I see is the real world, and I forgive the idea that ego will is my will. I feel the ball of anxiety melt away. As I continue to meditate, I move inward past the thoughts that make up the world I see and to the still place where myself resides. 
I'm dedicated to this practice. In the past, when I would quit for a few days, I would feel something was very wrong, so I would return to the practice. This is when my life is more peaceful than I could ever have imagined it would be. So here's Regina's tips. Yesterday, you made a list describing the world as you see it. Take a look at your list. Label each perception in the list as fear or peace, whichever feels most correct for the specific perception. When choosing between fear and peace, look at how you feel when you perceive the world in that way. Your mind might want to argue that a specific perception isn't peace, but it also isn't fear. Trust that any perception that isn't peace is fear even if it doesn't seem that way to you. Complete this step before continuing to read. Now, how many of your perceptions are labeled as fear compared to the number of perceptions that are labeled as peace? This, the labels help you understand why you see the world the way you do. If the majority of your perceptions are fear, you live in a fearful world. If some of your perceptions are fear and some are peace, you live in a somewhat stable world. But certain circumstances are fearful to you. If all your percep perceptions are peace, you see the real world. Okay, so here are my thoughts. Here's my list. My mornings are happy as I do my writing. Peace. I enjoy my calls and groups with ACIM students. Peace. I love visiting, visiting my granddaughter on Fridays. Peace. I sometimes worry I won't have enough time to do the prep on my courses and my videos. Fear. Sometimes I worry about my children. Fear. I get frustrated with dieting. Fear. <laughs> I love my life. Peace. I love that I hardly ever get upset anymore. Peace. I love that I don't worry about things much. Peace. I feel uneasy about the things I don't get done. Fear. I see that I fall into a somewhat stable world. I think, though, that peace is more predominant than fear. I have things that cause fear, but the fear thoughts don't dominate my life. Instead of simply accepting them, I look at them with the Holy Spirit so they can be healed. Regina's tips. Look at your list again. Ask spiritual intuition to select one fearful perception for you to work on. Sometimes a mind's reaction to intuition's choice is resistance. It might feel like, I don't want to work on that one. I'll pick an easier one. <laughs> Those thoughts come from the alien will mentioned in today's lesson. Ignore those thoughts and choose to work on the one selected by spiritual intuition. I do this all the time. I never have a fear thought I don't deal with when it comes to my attention. Some fear thoughts I used to have are completely gone. Using the idea from today's lesson is especially helpful on those stubborn beliefs as I remember that when I worry or even feel uneasy, that is an alien will. It is keeping me from the joyful solution promised to me. The following is an entry from a number of years ago. Holy Spirit helped me to understand something very important. Without this understanding of what to do about feeling overwhelmed as I choose to let go of judgment, I don't know how it would have continued. It's it's a real comfort to know that I cannot fail to find happiness. I can be very stubborn and insistent on holding on to my perceptions even when they make me unhappy. But it doesn't matter because in the end, I will choose God. Lately, I have been less willing to put it off. This morning, I was reading an excerpt from the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. It said, when I look with the body's eyes, I make unevaluated judgments about everything. I certainly see that this is true. Every thought I have seems to be a judgment, seems to be a way of selecting one thing over another. 
I feel overwhelmed by the task before me. I've gotten pretty good at noticing the obvious judgments, and my and I'm pretty uh, decisive about releasing them. But this seems like a her Herculean task. Holy Spirit, can you help me with this? And Holy Spirit said, Holy Child of God, this seems so difficult because you are looking with the ego's eyes. The ego shows you nothing but separation. So it seems as if you must change your mind about thousands of thoughts every day. There are not really a thousand thoughts. There's only one thought of separation. All the rest are just symbols of the one. Oh, Holy Spirit, I forgot. Of course this is true. So I just keep doing the same thing I've been doing. I just maintain my vigilance for untrue thoughts and give them to you for correction. And he said, yes, and now you have more and more opportunity to do so because you will be more aware of your thoughts. Do not, however, try to catch each and every thought. It's not necessary and will discourage and tire you. Your intention to do this work will ensure you that that you notice thoughts that you can use for this purpose. When you do notice thoughts that are not in alignment with the truth, renew your willingness to see differently. This simple reminder will be your part. It is not your job to make the change, only to want the change. I know your hesitation this morning to ask for my help. I understand your fear, and I thank you for the decision to walk through your fear. All of heaven thanks you. Do not forget the enlightened help you have. Do not forget that you cannot fail. And do not become tempted to believe that when you call on that help, <clears throat> you will not be answered, or that someone else will receive a better answer than you. You will always receive the answer that best serves you. <clears throat> the, line in, the divine and holy light of God, you are beloved of your Father. Never doubt this is true. Thank you. I love you. And I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks for joining me every day for these lessons. <clears throat> if you found this one helpful, then please like it. And uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.